uh, we will head over to our our next interview, and of course it is uh, Graham Williamson from uh, Graham Williamson X Factor Cars. Graham, welcome to the pits. Thanks, Jason. Good evening. How's things? Not too bad, and uh, obviously your uh, uh, your excitement levels are just about have gone up quite a bit there. Uh, tell us what you've been up to. Well, as you know, Jason, uh, we got involved with Speedway again a couple of years ago, our company. Um, I guess we've got in some way, some small way yourself, um, Roger needs to thank for that. And... Um, as a sponsor, really enjoyed it, um, managed to catch a lot of Speedway in the last two seasons, and I guess I've got the bug, so to speak. Okay, but of course, um, a lot of people probably don't realise that you've had the bug before and used to race back in 1833 or something, wasn't it? Uh, 1837, actually, oh, to be precise. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I always get out by a couple of years there, but yes, you did race before. What, what's, uh, what were you racing back then? Oh, look, it was um, just B and C grade productions in those days, Jason, out at Riverside, a little bit of racing at Beachlands, uh, just a Mark II Zephyr for four or five seasons with, uh, I guess, limited success. Managed to sneak in the odd win here and there, but um, really enjoyed it in those days. It was a great era at Speedway, the late 70s, early 80s, as you know. And, of course, um, there, there was just massive crowds and everybody came along to support them all too, didn't they? Well, that's right. I mean, in those days, there was nothing really much else on on a Saturday afternoon, and the crowds were huge. But having said that, you know, the cars were good, the fields were big, and um, as you know, some very, very good drivers in South and Dan and Otago in those days. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, now uh, the rumour is that you bought Daryl Ainsley's car. You will confirm that, have you? That's right. Um, we've been in discussions with Daryl um, for probably... Um, four to six weeks and um, we've just confirmed that in the last few days so um, we're really excited and really looking forward to it. Daryl's been great um, in, in helping me I guess, um, well convincing me I suppose. <laughs> well he, I suppose yeah he's done a good job, it's pretty hard to sell a car to a car salesman. Um, yeah, that's right, in <laughs> fact we, we, should, we should employ him after this one. Absolutely, now the, tell me though there was another car that was uh, perhaps something you're looking at as well and uh, was uh, from the uh, just out of Christchurch, a little place called Darfield, wasn't it? Well, that's right. Um, we were looking at, at the Love Lady car, the one that um, that John built and has raced successfully with his son and with other drivers in the last couple of seasons. We narrowed it down to two, Jason, in the South Island. We considered that it was really two cars in, in the South Island in particular that were um, worth considering, and um, Daryl's car won out in the end. But um, I've got to say that it was... It was a close race, as you'd expect. But the, one of the reasons why you went with the uh, <coughs> Hypermac car is because of where it's based and also where the chassis build is based as well. Well, that's right. I mean, fortunately for us, Shade McIntyre is just down the road from our dealership in Cromwell. A um, few conversations with Shane, um, been observing his cars, as I said, for the last two or three seasons, and the Love Lady cars. Both are very successful in their own right, so it was a difficult decision, I've got to say. I would hate to have that decision, that's for sure. But um, I'm sure you've made the right one. And, uh, and of course, also, we've learnt there, you've just bought uh, Campbell McManaway's uh, trailer because, uh, obviously, Campbell's got a bigger one. So you're, uh, you're pretty much good to go. Well, that's right, Campbell being Campbell. Uh, he has gone bigger and better. But, yeah, I kind of thought towing it to the track um, on a tow rope is not a good look. So um, we thought, it, well, a trailer is something that definitely we need. And, uh, once again, Campbell's been um, invaluable in that respect as well. That's awesome, isn't it? And, uh, and of course, you're doing the big uh, change of colours and all that sort of stuff. You've got a, a, some sort of idea about what you're going to put on the side of the, the trailer and, and we're looking to see a big change in the colour of the car as well? Yes, there will be a change in colour, definitely. Um, we've, we've picked the colours. We've spoken to the painter. Uh, we had a conversation with the sign writer today. So it's, it's, in some respects, it's going to be a long winter in that... Um, I'm excited about, um, you know, the first race, if you like, um, but then in other respects, it's going to be a short winter. There is lots to do. And, of course, the other thing, too, is you've never had actually had an opportunity to drive the car yet, have you? No. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Um, hopefully my balls are big enough, Jason, if I'm allowed to say that on your radio <laughs> oh, station. I absolutely can. Um, but, no, I mean, I've spent the last few nights just watching some video of Daryl in the car um, on different tracks. Um, Daryl drives it superbly, of course, very aggressively. Um, so I've been sort of studying his lines and his style. Um, who knows? I, I just, I guess that side of it is the unknown at this stage. 
Okay, and uh, I suppose you wouldn't really had much of an opportunity to uh, choose what you know what you're going to do next year. Was it be just staying locally, or you're planning on doing DHL, or, or what's the scenario? Oh, look, it's um, sort of small steps, I think, Jason. Um, I'm very familiar, well, from from an observer's point of view, with with uh, Cromwell, the Cromwell track, of course, and with Riverside. Um, people, the drivers, tell me that Beachlands is a very good track to race on and Daryl's car suits Beachlands, but I'm just going to take it as it comes. I mean, I um, I don't know that DHL would be a realistic uh, possibility at this stage, but once again, um, we'll wait and see. That's good, isn't it? And um, did you get the car as a turnkey package, or did you have to find a motor for it, or was it just away you go? No, turn the key, away we go. Um, quite a, a lot of spares thrown in, actually. Um, and, yeah, so, no, we've just really got to, um, I guess, um, prepare the car properly through the winter, uh, get the colours right, as I said, the sight lighting and everything, try and get some laps in at some stage if possible, and then uh, go from there. And so, the big question, uh, what letter are you going to put on the side of the car? Well, um, I guess, given that I live in Cromwell, um, I've got a real affinity with Riverside, but um, I guess it'll be a T. Um, and uh, yes, but so... As I said, primarily racing in Cromwell initially. Um, I want to try and um, race at Riverside. Um, I really like that track. It's a track that looks like a big roomy track and then possibly just go from there. The other side too with uh, uh, Central Motor Speedway's uh, track, it's a bit more forgiving as well unless you're going balls out into turn one and two. Uh, but to round turn three and four, it's, it would be a good learning track for you, wouldn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, the drivers I've spoken to, I mean, have all said that it's really three and four are the, are the ones you have to master. Um, one or two, you can get it wrong, of course, but, um, but yeah, three and four are the tricky ones. So, um, you know, um, obviously time will tell there and we'll hopefully uh, be able to get round it. Now, I've just actually got a text from Daryl Ainsley whilst we've been speaking, and he quite simply said, if you don't put a T on the side of the car, you're not bloody getting it. Well, I'd better have a tea on it then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, hey, it doesn't matter as long as we get to see it down this part of the country. We're looking forward to uh, to seeing what sort of colour scheme you're going to put on it as well. I actually half expected or half thought that Roger Nees might have a bit of an input into the way the car will look. Well, I'm, I'm staying at Roger Nees on Friday night. We're heading to the Alf Cup prize giving in Nelson, which we're looking forward to. So lots to talk about with Roger. Um, I mean, Roger's a great ambassador for Speedway. A great guy, so looking forward to having a, a few bourbons with Roger on Friday night and Saturday night, of course. And as far as Daryl and the car goes, Jason, I mean, we all know that that car's been successful, as has the driver. So hopefully I can um, do the car and its former driver justice. I have no doubt in your ability. You're one of those guys that uh, will just uh, get it, you know, keep doing it until you've done it right. Well, that's right. I mean, um, I'm, I'm having, I've thought about it long and hard. And I'm going to give it a really good crack. Mate, uh, we look forward to catching you up on the track and uh, we might even catch up with you just uh, during the off-season just to see how the build uh, or the colour schemes and all the bits and pieces are going. And uh, best of luck and we look forward to seeing you out on the track next season. Good to talk to you, Jason. Looking forward to it. No worries, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. There we go. Of course, that was uh, the Graham Williamson from uh, Graham Williamson Expector Cars and uh, he is... Now, as you heard, the proud owner of one Daryl Ainsley's X Hypermac machine, or Ainsley's X machine. Uh, so uh, congratulations goes out to, uh, uh, to Graham, and uh, it should be a lot of fun for him.